The Bengals are clearly a contender. Just how much are they contending for? You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Bengals fans, and welcome to another episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. I'm your host, Jake Lisko. He's your host, James Rapini. Hit me with the Carlton. The Carlton, baby. That's what you do. That's the first place Carlton dance. Look, man, you, you, got, to, you got to bring out some old school when uh, you have listeners like ours, Jake. Yeah, our listeners are great. In fact, they're uh, the best listeners. And you know how I know they're the best listeners, James, is because we topped the iTunes chart for Locked On for the first time ever. We've been the top team-specific show before, right before the Bengals drafted Joe Burrow, but we've never been the top Locked On show. At that time, Locked On NFL Draft was still ahead of us. And so, big day for us on the podcast, and... Big day for you, the listeners. Also, 7,000 YouTube views in like 24 hours, which I think has to be a record for the game recap. So big, big thank you to you, the listener. You guys are awesome. You are why this is happening. You love winners. And hey, so do we. So if you're new and you're coming back after you saw the show yesterday, do make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Hit follow if you're listening on an audio device and you'll get us delivered to your ears and eyes. Every day, easy as pie. Easy as pie. I, I could go for some pie. Uh, you know, the, the Bengals served out their fair share of humble pie to, to the Ravens and Lamar Jackson on Sunday. And uh, speaking of that, met a bunch of Locked On Bengals listeners in Baltimore Saturday, Sunday at the game, and even at the airport on Monday. So shout out to everybody. Love meeting you in person. Want to shake every single one of your hands. So if you see me out, you're probably not going to see Jake out since he is in Canada and Vancouver Island. But if you see me out, say hi, because uh, I, I love meeting you you people, because it's not just guys. I almost said guys, you know, men and women that listen to this podcast. About two and a half, three percent women. So if you're a woman listening, we especially thank you for sticking it out in a, in a very male dominated audience. That's, that's really great. Uh, so speaking of humble pie served out. We clearly didn't get any of it. We're very high on ourselves right now, but uh, the Ravens got some and so did the national media. So let's start there. And we're going to have a bit of a meta <laughs> episode here today, I think, because yeah, I woke up this morning and there's so much like I'm on, I'm on the West coast, obviously. So I wake up a little bit later and there's just all of this Bengals content. And I'm sitting here like, man, this is weird. Like, I don't remember yeah. 2015 the last time anyone talked about this team this way. And I'm like, oh, well, this was this was our thing. James and I talk about the Bengals. Why is everyone else doing it? That, that's our gig. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, the national media now, you, you get a signature win. And this is what it does, is the entire narrative changes. There are individual, you know, Bengals stands, as it were, in the national media. Kay Adams, Peter Schrager, the Good Morning Football crew, generally speaking, pretty kind to the Bengals. But... Outside of that, pretty few and far between at sites like The Athletic, The Ringer, the other ESPN shows, any other national broadcast. So this win firmly puts the Bengals on the map. And, you know, you can't really ignore them when seven games into the season, they're the number one seed in the conference. Yeah, it's honestly, and I hope they do or have done this by now because we're recording this on Monday evening, Jake. I hope that the Bengals, you know, Duke Tobin, the Blackburns, Mike Brown, Zach Taylor, Lou Anarumo, we did the gritty. I just did the Carlton. I hope they do a little, you know, victory lap of their own. Maybe they go out to dinner. Maybe they have an, a good steak. Maybe they have it catered in at Paul Brown Stadium, whatever it is. Because look, uh, a lot of people, including myself, doubted at least some of what they've done over the past three years and certainly the past two off seasons to get to this point. But the reason they're five and two and the reason that all these national media outlets are, are writing about them is because of what they've added over the past two off seasons and all of those pieces. And we could go into each and every piece. Obviously it starts with Joe Burrow. And I think that's the part of this that's even more exciting than 2015. 2015, I was telling a fan this on Sunday night felt like, an older team 
that might be their last oorah type thing. It felt like they could win. I'm not saying that. And they might have if Andy doesn't break his thumb. But this team feels almost like 05, where they're building towards something, but just might be ready to win right now, which I don't think anyone really thought three weeks ago, two weeks ago. Sunday at 12.55 Eastern Standard Time before the Bengals took it to the Ravens at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. And the reason they're in that spot is everything that they've done over the past couple of off seasons. So I do wonder, you know, I and, and I did ask Zach this a couple of weeks ago. I was like, do you dance at all? And, and I can't get into why we don't have enough time for me to um, explain why I asked him that. He said no. So maybe he just had a glass of wine or whatever it is. But I, uh, I hope he at least enjoyed it a little bit. Obviously, the season isn't over and they're not holding a Lombardi or anything like that. But uh, it's a, a damn good start after a, a huge, huge win on the road against a division opponent like the Ravens. And, and waking up this morning, you're, you're looking at it like, oh, they have to go play Mike White's Jets. The Jets traded for Joe Flacco since then, obviously. Flacco. And at this point, Flacco is about as scary as me playing quarterback. But you know, the, the team can't take it lightly, even if I'm going to take it lightly, the way that you guys all got really mad at me for jinxing the Lions game when I said, hey, I'm ready to enjoy a relaxing day of Bengals football today, or jinxing the end of the Ravens game when I said, hey, they're up three scores. The Ravens don't have time. People yeah. were still upset that, hey, come on. And, and they do have to take the Jets seriously. And, and I think they have that mentality in the building. And that's because Joe Burrow has a mentality and this team has adopted Joe Burrow's way of thinking. And so I, I don't think that we should be terribly worried about a letdown against the Jets. And we'll get to talking about the Jets. But you mentioned comparing this to, to 2005. Guess what the 2005 Bengals record was after seven games, James? Was it five and two? It was five and two. They started the season five and one. They lost to Pittsburgh in week seven. And instead, they started four and two this year and went on the road and beat the Ravens. So uh, the Bengals in, in wow. 2005 beat the Ravens in week nine on the road in Baltimore by a score of 21 to nine. So uh, they, they I, started I mean, four and oh. Yeah, they started four and oh that year. They lost to the yes. Jags on Monday night football. Yes. And, and again, they should have won, by the way. Um, and then, OK, so they lose to Pittsburgh at home. Then they beat them on the road later that year. Man, look, oh, five for me. And I don't know about you. That was like, because I, I was 13, 14 years old. The Bengals had sucked my entire life. That's the season you think about. Oh, yeah. And so, and so now you look at Burrow and, and everything like that. There are a lot of our listeners that grew up with AJ or Andy or the tail end of that. And they haven't seen a lot of winning. And they don't remember a lot of winning. And so this enjoy the ride because it's a fun one and, and you never know how it's going to go. Hopefully it ends up better than, than 2005 did. And, and really that whole era over the next five years, it's uh, certainly looking good right now. And 2005 was, was like the defense was so hot and cold, right? Like that was the, that was the turnover or bust defense, right? So couldn't stop anyone just forced turnovers. Yeah. Agreed. Some differences there in that regard, uh, before we get to some other ranking systems that have been updated, playoff percentages and that sort of thing, uh, oh, oh, oh. James, playoffs, baby. Uh, a couple of numbers for you. The Bengals now averaging, uh, a hundred, they have 189 points in seven games that works out to 27 points per game after putting up big numbers the last two weeks, getting very close to that 30 point per game mark you talked about. And on defense, only giving up less than this technically, but 18 points per game. There was a pick six in there, so it's probably more like 17 points allowed per game for the defense because this is just points against, not points defense allowed. Yeah. Uh, but overall score differential, 61 plus 61 is good for second best in the AFC uh, that's tied for fourth best with the Rams in the NFL. So some, you know, Pythagorean reasons, some general results reasons, three and one on the road. Now, good chance to go to four and one on the road with an extra home game this year in the unbalanced schedule. So yeah, the schedule might get tougher in terms of opponents, but the way things are going, certainly some reasons for optimism. And at this point, even the advanced analytics sites are beginning to buy in as well. We'll hit some of those numbers as we continue the conversation about how much the Bengals are contending for coming up next. 
You could save money with GetUpside. We talk about it all the time here on Locked On Bengals. And heck, maybe you could use that money on some built bars or you know, a little Locked On Bengals swag coming soon. But GetUpside is an incredible app that if you buy gas, and who doesn't, right? You fill up at the gas tank that you need to know about. All you got to do, you take your iPhone, you take your Android device, go to the App Store, go to, to Google Play, download GetUpside, G-E-T-U-P-S-I-D-E. And you're going to save up to 25 cents per gallon every time you fill up. And if you use promo code TOUCHDOWN right now, you're going to save a bonus 25 cents. That's up to 50 cents per gallon every time you fill up. I get it. Gas prices rising. If you're like me and you're driving around, sometimes driving. I, I flew to Baltimore, but driving to different games. Well, you know, you, you want to save money every time you fill up. And you can do that for free with the free Get Upside app. So download it now in the App Store or Google Play. Use promo code Touchdown for up to fifty percent off or fifty uh, cents off, excuse me, per gallon. Again, the Get Upside app. Get it today. All right, James. The uh, the advanced sites starting to buy in. There is a lot of skepticism still with all of these advanced analytics sites but this way you, you number things. you number crunchers you number crunchers are buying in now interesting well i, I mean we were both skeptical right of just no, how know, far this I team know. could do go no, come, no. Oh, on a serious note like i get your joke i do i'm dead panning i'm sorry but on a serious note like we were both skeptical of how far this team could go sure. i think we both thought they should be better but five and two is is not a result that either of us really foresaw like you could see it happening but it wasn't something that we expected right i had them at three and four i think after seven games i believe so so that's like a very significant outperformance of your expectation right and so now they have a chance to get to six and two i think that at this point is very expected you know nine and a half point favorites as, as the Jets acquire Joe Flacco in desperation. I don't know why they're trading assets for Joe Flacco, but I guess that's neither here nor there. Uh, but, but Football Outsiders, for example, has the Bengals all the way up to a mean wins, average wins in their simulations, 10 and a half, which is just shy of Baltimore, who they have on average winning 10.9 games uh, in, in their simulations. But their playoff odds for the Bengals shoot up nearly 20% after beating the Ravens because they are undefeated in the division. They're undefeated in the conference. And like I mentioned yesterday, they, they have the destiny in their hands. They have their destiny in their hands. All they have to do is keep winning games and they win the tiebreaker. So because they get the division win, they're now 74% to go to the playoffs. And that's coming from uh, about 34% to win the division, 40% to, to get the wild card, according to, the football outsiders simulations after week seven. Wow. I mean, that's about as much as you could ask for going into the year. 40% to potentially win the division in what still is a, you know, a really, really tough division. And I think going into this year, people thought that maybe behind the NFC West, but the difference is, is a lot of people either had the Bengals third or fourth, not first, right? Not a team that was going to go into Baltimore and win and, and win on the road. And they're three and one on the road now. And, that Bears loss just looks so weird now looking back at it. Um, can't ask for more. And you you want this to – they need to capitalize on this momentum and, and obviously do th – this Jets week is much like the Lions week where you want to do what good teams do to bad teams and you just go in and handle business, get the hell out of there and go 3-0 and during this road swing with uh, Cleveland looming and what's going to be a huge game in week nine. But – I'm not surprised to see these numbers jump because Sunday, again, it was such a, a prove it type game. And the, the Packers game was that, and it was such, that was a weird, just unique outlier type situation where a lot of people nationally were like, Whoa, look at the Bengals hanging with the Packers. We were like, ah, they should have won the game. And so when you go on the road now and you play Lamar Jackson, who was a thorn in your side, you were 0-5 against them. And you do what they did on offense and defense, complete team effort, which we hadn't seen all year. It's like, oh, man, you know, these Bengals, they are legit. So I'm glad that the numbers reflect that as well because that's – you're right. I, I was skeptical going into the game 
I picked, I'm three and four on the year now from a, a prediction standpoint, picked the Ravens to win by four. And it was just such a convincing win. If I would have told you Lamar Jackson was pulled at the end of the game, Jake, would you have thought it was because the Ravens were up by a lot or because the Bengals were up by a lot? N- nobody answering this question except for maybe the Bengalorian and Logie B and 513 and Bengals captain would, would answer <laughs> that, that it's because the Bengals were winning by a lot. I mean, the super fans, right? Jim, Bengal Jim, like the diehards, the true believers, you know, and, and give them credit for that because they're being rewarded this year. The the Bengals uh, have a chance to pull their starters for the third week in a row against the Jets. And, uh, you know, I, I really hope that happens. Let's go to the next analytics site that has updated their playoff odds. And this is going to be 538. 538 has the Bengals at 78% to make the playoffs. They're giving them a 16% chance to get the buy in the AFC, which is actually uh, the third highest Odds tied with the Chargers for the first round by behind Buffalo and 1% wow. behind Tennessee because Tennessee has a cakewalk in the AFC South, which continues to be, as it has been, the worst division in football. It feels like it's been that way since Peyton Manning was drafted by the Colts. Yeah, uh, But 78% to go to the playoffs, 41% to win the division. So they're giving the Bengals 4% better odds than the Ravens to win the division. So... According to 538, Bengals slight favorites to win the division, projecting them to finish the season at 11 and 6. So there's another, you know, ELO ranking based, which is, you know, strength of schedule, strength of opponent adjusted and looking at results. And they are bullish on the Bengals. A 10 spot jump from roughly 20 to 10 in this ELO based system. Yeah. And the reason I think people are buying in so much. And this isn't necessarily the numbers part of it, but just in general, all those national columns and stuff. I think Burrow's getting better and better and better. And we're seeing it and the way he's moving in the pocket and stuff. So like if if they do go 11 and six or they do win the AFC North, what's the path to that? It's nine continuing to improve and being better and better in the pocket, hopefully cutting down on the interception a week that we're seeing that he's on pace. He's on pace to throw a little over one interception per game. You don't want to see that. And I think that'll, that'll slowly stop if not start to stop this week. Um, But that to me, when you look at the path, if bro continues to ascend, there's, there's a scenario by the end of the year, especially if the Bengals are in the division hunt or win the division where Burrow's the best quarterback in the division with an MVP right? With a, a former number one pick in Baker. Like, he, I, I think he, there is. I think there is that oh, scenario. Oh, I see what you're saying. I thought you were saying he would win the MVP, and I'm sitting here thinking Tom Brady's still in the NFL. No, in Kyler. and No, I... It, it, It'd no, be hard. But it could happen. It would, it would be. be hard. It, it could. No, and it, yeah, I don't think he's there, but but with an MVP in Lamar, I with a guy in, in Baker and in the, in the Browns, who a lot of people pick to win this division, and, and you know, and the Steelers, which are still... It's going to be a tough game when they play them. So if he continues to ascend, then all of those numbers are just going to keep going up because it raises the ceiling of everybody. Look, the Bengals aren't a perfect team, but Joe Burrow doesn't give a damn, and he's confident in his in his guys. And I think that that, as much as anything, he said something to Albert Breer, uh, a Sports Illustrated. He was like, this is who we are. And the fact that he's saying that, it's not like he's surprised, excited. I don't think he's doing his victory laps behind closed doors. I think he's like, yeah, this is this is what I expect. This is what we're going to be. And uh, Jamar said something, too, Yeah. after the game that stuck with me. You know, mm-hmm. Joe Burrow throws for 416 yards, just sliding well in the pocket. He's playing really well. I, you know, and, and Jamar's like, no, this is what I expect out of him. Yeah. And, and I love that because – Jamar expects that out of Joe and vice versa. And when you have that type of culture, holy bleep, I'm not going to cuss. You, you, you don't want to let your guy down, it, it, the guy next to you. And that's such a, a contagious, awesome thing. And it, it's uh, it's got the Bengals in a good position. So sorry, I, I'm reacting not necessarily to the numbers, okay. but why they're there. And I, I think number nine is a big number as to why those numbers are what they are. On his way to another Rookie of the Week award, he is the co-rookie of the week for Pro Football Focus. 
uh, with Kyle Pitts, who had a fantastic game for Atlanta as well. He also is the reward recipient for the uh, biggest game-changing moment for PFF. And while we're on the topic of PFF honors, Jackson Carmen, play of the week for his driving pancake block on Samaji Pirine's touchdown run. I have some Joe Burrow numbers and Jamar Chase numbers that we can talk about to finish things up because I think those two are really driving the team's success and will take this yep. team along with the defense who is playing great as far as it's going to go. So we'll wrap up our conversation about the Bengals contenders and why it's time to buy in or at least what the reasons are coming up next. Speaking of numbers, nine plus one has equaled seven through seven weeks of the NFL season for the Bengals. And maybe you're buying into the Jamar Chase rookie of the year. Hopefully you got the odds at betonline.ag a few weeks ago, or maybe during the preseason when he couldn't catch a cold and now he's catching everything and is one of the best receivers in the NFL. Or maybe you think Joe Burrow is going to supplant and overtake Dak Prescott, continue to rise and overtake him for comeback player of the year. You can bet on both of those things at betonline.ag. Plus, yeah, you maybe you think the Bengals are going to win the division. You can bet on that as well in one spot, betonline.ag. They have a new updated desktop or mobile website for you. It is extremely convenient. I'd use them. You should too. And right now, you're going to get some free money to use at betonline.ag. Go there, use promo code Locked On, and you're going to get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's free money, baby. So again, betonline.ag, promo code Locked On to get a 50% welcome bonus. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. We love to give you guys ways to save money, to get free money, and Rock Auto is another great way to do it. They're going to beat any of your uh, chain store prices. They're going to crush the prices at your car dealership. So don't spend 30, 50, 100% more for the same parts. Go to rockauto.com. And all you got to do is type in, you know, Honda Odyssey LX or whatever your car is. You'll see all the parts available for your car or truck and you'll be able to order right from the comfort of your own home on your laptop, on your on your cell phone, on your iPhone, whatever it is. Super easy to use. Very basic website. They have exactly what you need from brake parts to motor oil, air filters, James's favorite part in a car or even a new carpet. If you're trying to get things a little bit cleaner in there. Go check it out right now, rockauto.com. See all the parts available for your car or truck. Make sure you write locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? So they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, and all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. James, one of the factors you mentioned there as we were discussing why it's time to buy in about the Bengals and, and Joe Burrow getting better is, is something I have a stat for. And the reason this stood out to me is as you were talking about it, you're talking about, you know, national media starting to be like, oh, maybe we are talking too much about Justin Herbert. Maybe this Joe Burrow guy who was the number one pick just a year ago is actually pretty good at quarterback, which, I mean, duh, right? But um, the, the one thing that, that stands out is Greg Rosenthal, who writes the QB index for NFL.com, he, he took over for Chris Wessling. Uh, rest in peace, Chris. Really miss that guy's work. Great, great writer. Um, but he and I had a conversation earlier in the year where he was concerned it was going to take Burrow time to get back and to feel comfortable in the pocket. And he's been slowly working his way up the QB index, which, you know, you might remember back in the day, the Dalton index was was part of this. And that was like, you know, your league average quarterback. And Burrow's been working his way up the list. And and Greg Rosenthal uh, favorited this tweet today. It's, it's a stat that, in my opinion, portrays Joe Burrow's increasing level of comfort this year that was incredibly evident. And if you go see Bengal Sands tweets in, in the game on Sunday against the Ravens, and it's a pressure to sack rate, which I think is a stat that kind of represents how well you're, you're dealing with pressure, obviously. How well you're moving in the pocket. How well you're getting the ball out on time. His pressure to sack rate in weeks one and two this year was 40%. You and I sounded the alarm bells about this a little bit. That was the league worse at the time. He was not escaping pockets. He was inviting pressure unto himself. Since by then... By far. By far, by the oh, way, yeah. the league worst. Yeah. Like 10, 15% worse than anyone else in the league for that period of time. Since then... 
for, for weeks three to seven, 14.9%, which is just about average, very much in, in the acceptable realm of sack uh, of, of pressures to sacks better than he was last year. I think like 24% last year pressures to sacks against yep. the Ravens and their last second rotations and all their blitzes and all this stuff that confused the hell out of Burrow last year, 7.1% pressure yeah. to sack the guy. And, and these are the clips that Bengal Sands has up. He's working on his all 22 cutups right now is move so well in the pocket against the Ravens when they were getting pressure, absolutely mm -hmm. destroyed them when they blitzed and played man. You can't really do that to Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. And that reason alone, that's going to make them so much harder for opposing defenses to deal with. Yeah, like think about it like this. And look, the, the numbers match what we, we thought because I thought early in that game he was taking hits. If he wasn't moving well, he would have been sacked like eight times in the first quarter. I feel like it was uh, it was a rough, rough start, you know, for the line as they were adjusting things and uh, Burrow was sliding and doing that. I mean, the third down again where he throws it to Samaj P. Ryan, I believe it was on the first drive. That great. alone is just a, a perfect example of it. Um, Even on some incomplete passes, he showed the great movement and then he just couldn't quite complete the pass. Like there's several examples of this. It, it was really good. Yeah, it, exactly. And so. Um, but the the thing, like looking back and continuing to reflect on Sunday, this is a Ravens defense that does what it does. It doesn't matter if you're facing Patrick Mahomes, Jesus himself. It doesn't matter. They're going to blitz you and do man to man. And that's it. And after they started making some plays, it changed. Like they, they had to kind of change what they were doing. And Donald Martindale doesn't do that. And they were changing it despite the Bengals having, and I still think it's a below average offensive line because Joe Burrow is too damn smart and Jamar Chase is too damn good. And he beat Marlon Humphrey, one of the NFL's best corners, like a drum. And I think PFF had the stat, it was five receptions for 165 and a touchdown. And Uzama obviously had a huge touchdown against Humphrey as well. Like, so maybe Humphrey just had a bad day. Okay, well, these are the guys that caused it. These are the guys that made Humphrey have a bad day because you know these Ravens were motivated to to shut Burrow up and you know and, and shut people up about the Bengals and it was the it was the exact opposite. So if Burrow, we know how smart he is pre snap. If he moves in the pocket like he does, that's the the biggest or best way like he can and continues to improve in that area. That's the best way this offensive line is going to improve over the next 10 games and into the playoffs. If they make it there to me, could they make a deadline deal? Absolutely. And I know we'll talk about it at some point that, you know, there's someone that can help, but to me, it's him continuing to improve, continuing to be even better pre-snap, which this coaching staff, you know, puts a ton of responsibility on him anyways. And then him moving in the pocket and sliding and move in everything that he does and it continues to get better. So, uh, so yeah, it, it's just, it is crazy to me to think that like nine plus one equals Ravens game plan, rip it up and let's change it. The, Tyreek Hill and Patrick Mahomes don't do that to these guys. They don't. And so that's, uh, that's just pretty cool to see. And, and you credit Jamar Chase for that, right? Joe Burrow, great job of maneuvering in the pocket. The accuracy was there. The decision-making, the quick trigger, the, the post-snap processing, seeing the rotations that were happening late in the snap and, and adjusting to those and knowing what to do with the football, all, all great, right? Like the mental part of his game and, and the accuracy, those are, those are the calling cards, right? But the, the movement in the pocket coming back is absolutely huge. I agree with that. And if he continues to manipulate that well, Good luck. And the reason that I say good luck is because Jamar Chase is better than we thought he would be because we're all idiots. Because, I mean, at 19 years old, I, I love this Mike Renner tweet comparing what Devontae Smith did at 19 years old when he had like, I don't know, a handful of catches for a little bit over 100 yards and a touchdown to Jamar Chase's 2,000 yards and 20 touchdowns or whatever it was. And I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but you know, we're overthinking it, right? And, and Connor Donick, I think, did an article at, on the Draft Network about this today. But Jamar Chase, you can't cover him one-on-one. -on -one. Marlon Humphrey was the best corner he's faced this year, and Marlon Humphrey was the most cut corner he's faced all year. Like, he, they, they just couldn't do it. 
other teams have tried to provide help. They've tried to cloud that side of the field. They've tried to bracket him. And the Ravens just said, Marlon Humphrey, go go beat up this rookie. Nah. Yeah. Jamar Chase is too good. He's he's better than we thought he would be. He's breaking records. And he, I mean, we talked about it yesterday. He's just so impressive in the way he's doing it. And my favorite chart about this, just so I can get my quick stat out of the way here, James, before I let you You're talk good. again, is – there's a chart that Dan Pizzutta put out today that is uh, on the on the x-axis, the average depth of target, on the y-axis, yards after catch per reception. Generally speaking, the lower your depth of target, the higher your yards after catch because you're getting the ball in a design to run after the catch in those shorter targets. The so vertical passes tend to be thrown, caught, tackled. So yeah. there's this inverse relationship. It's a downward-facing slope, and... As you get to the guys that are getting the higher depth of target, their yards after catch are like two, three yards. Jamar Chase, second in the NFL in yards after catch at about seven and a half yards and like fourth or fifth in the NFL in average depth of target. Like seven yards, sorry, five yards better than guys in his neighborhood for, for that high average depth of target. Just like it's dumb. You shouldn't be able to do that. And he's doing it. It's insane. He's a freak. You know, he's a freak of nature. And by the way, I don't blame the Ravens for going into the game. I said it on my YouTube. I I believe I said it here. I would have put Marlon Humphrey on a one-on-one. I would have said, all right, 44, take away one. And and then we'll, we'll live with everything else and, and try to get the Joe and make someone else beat us. And Jamar was like, at the end of that first half, it's time to take over. And he took over against Humphrey. He breaks that tackle in the second half with the, you know, the, as such a fun play to watch. Um, and that's the part of his game that we did talk about his ability to break tackles and his ability to get yak. And no, uh, you're right. I, I think we were pretty damn high on him. I was pushing and, and letting everybody know that they should take him. I didn't see 754 yards in seven games in six touchdowns and, you know, just crushing teams. I mean, I, I how are the jets even going to guard this dude? You're going to put three guys on him? I don't know. Uh, but that's uh, that's where we're getting. It is ridiculous what he's doing. And there's been a couple times this year, uh, you know, the the Steelers game, the because the Vikings one surprised me, but it happened, you know, the deep one. But the Steelers game, uh, the the Detroit game, actually, it, it seems like every every week where I just start laughing. Like, how is this dude still doing it? And, and when he broke that tackle, no one in the stadium thought he was getting caught. Spun out of it and boom, shot He's out of a rocket. faster than the Ravens' defense. I started laughing, and uh, <laughs> I really did. You know, um, and it's because it's just hilarious at this point, and it's it's ridiculous and stupid and hard to believe if you didn't see it. But uh, it is what it is, and you know, going back to April, I, I think there are a lot of people happy that the Bengals took a wide receiver with uh, that fifth pick, despite what uh, so many said at the time. I mean, my goodness. Jeff Jeff Schwartz took the L on Twitter yesterday. He said, you know what? I'm wrong. Jamar Chase has changed this offense. Uh, yep. Last stat before we get out of here, because we do have to get out of here, and we'll have our film review with more thoughts on this game, tape-based instead of stat-based and narrative-based, coming your way on Tuesday's show with Bengal Sands. Joe Burrow now leads the NFL in yards per attempt. Uh, and part of this is because Russell Wilson is hurt. I think he was at the top of this leaderboard, but 9.23 yards per attempt after going over 400 yards against the Baltimore Ravens, edging out Matthew Stafford to take over first in the NFL in this metric. Not bad for a guy with uh, a baby arm and small hands. I don't know. I mean, not, not, uh, not bad at all. I mean, <laughs> it's uh it's crazy to think about, and this offense still, even after Sunday, I still think has a gear that we haven't seen yet. And part of that's Joe, but T, T still hasn't had the game. Boyd, we, we haven't seen a lot from him the past three weeks, and it's fine because Jamar's going off, but they're – or they have different gears. Maybe they're not going to play, you know, drop 40 on every team. I don't mean that, but they have other – other weapons uh, if Jamar does get taken yeah. away at any given point. So that that part to me is really exciting when you talk about this team. But look, how real are they? I think they're real. 
because you don't go into Baltimore and do that yeah. against that coach, against that team on the road and, and say, oh, they're not real. They're real and, and they're fun. And uh, I, obviously, as we started at the top, thank you for listening, but uh, enjoy the ride, Bengals fans, because this could be uh, a year to remember. Hopefully we get that rookie of the year in Cincinnati with Jamar Chase. He's also currently on pace to break not only like the traditional receiving records, but also the yards above replacement or whatever football outsiders metrics, which have Michael Thomas and Randy Moss in the company of the records he's breaking. So, I mean, just, just so many fun things. And we hardly talked about the defense today. The defense is another reason this team is so good. And I'm sure we'll get into that with Mike tomorrow as we get back to the film. But, uh, you know, just taking a, a little day here to appreciate the 5-2 and two Cincinnati Bengals for what they are with a bit of a prove-it win and, and bask in that glory for a little bit and back to work. Take care of business against the Jets. We'll talk about that one in a couple of days. And then, like you said, James, that big game against the Browns before the bye. We'll see how those go. Until next time, Bengals fans, when we'll be joined by Mike Santagata for our film review takeaways. Hootay, and have a good one.